Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and this is video three in lesson 24. We're talking here about the derivatives of trigonometric functions, and you see three examples here from Calculus Simplified that we are going to work through. First thing I should mention is there are a few, you know, foundational derivatives for trig functions. So I'm going to scroll, I'm going to zoom in down here and just write those down. So the derivative of sine x is cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. Uh, and then the derivative of tangent x, in case we need that, is secant squared x. Remember, these are the reciprocal trig functions, so secant x is 1 over cosine x. Okay, so that's pretty much all we'll need, at least for this video. And there are a variety of ways to derive these three particular differentiation formulas. I'll refer you to Calculus Simplified in Chapter 3 for some information there. Great, so let's take a look at what we're given here. And I guess we'll start off with this first example up here. Zoom in there. So if I want to differentiate this function, um, what does it look like? Well, it's x squared minus tangent x. So I'm going to use my differentiation properties, which says that I can just differentiate x squared, and then I can differentiate tangent x. And then because the function is the difference of those two, I can then just find the difference of those derivatives. So the first function is a power function, so power rule gives me 2x. The second one we just talked about, it's derivative, so tangent x differentiated gives us secant squared x. Great, so that's it for that one, nice and quick. Um, so let's go down here, differentiate sine squared x. So remember this is notation, right? Um, you know, sin squared does not by itself mean anything. Um, it is notation for sine of x quantity squared. So once you realize that, then this makes the next step um, pretty uh, straightforward because you can view this as a composite function, right? So if I want to differentiate h of x in this case, what do I do? Well, it's the composite of uh, something squared with sine x. So the outer function is something squared. Its derivative is 2 something to the first. So we um, substitute in sine x and then multiply by the derivative of sine x. So again, I'm using the chain rule here. And then you can see that we need the derivative of sine x. We talked about it. It was the first one over here. So that derivative is cosine of x, cosine of x. Now, this is the answer in the sense that this is the end of the calculation. However, you could also rewrite this in a different way by using the fact that 2 times sine x times cosine x is sine of 2x. So that's one of the many relationships uh, in trigonometry, right? This is um, not something that you necessarily would think uh, or know right away, but in case you have talked about double angles, uh, sine of 2x in, uh, in some other uh, context, then this is something you might do to make the expression look a little simpler and e perhaps easier to work with later on. Okay, so last one, differentiate secant x. So, you know, in some sense, we just talked about the rule so the rule down here, oh, never mind, we did not. Uh, so let's talk about the derivative of secant x, right? Um, I saw secant x and I was like, oh, we just talked about that. Yes, but in a different context. So how would I differentiate secant x? Well, um, the first thing to note is that I can write secant x as 1 over cosine x. That part we did talk about a few minutes ago in this video. Um, so this is a quotient of two functions, technically speaking. I could do the quotient rule. But anytime you have 1 divided by a function, right, what I would do instead of the quotient rule is I would write it as um, the function to the negative 1 and then apply the chain rule. It's a little faster. So the derivative in this case by the chain rule would be you bring down the minus 1, evaluate it at cosine x, and then to the minus 2, right, because the outer function here is basically x to the negative 1, whose derivative is minus x to the minus 2. So that's where this and this come from. OK, uh, and then I multiply this by the derivative of the inside. All right, and that part we did talk about, that is minus sine x. OK, so I get minus cosine of x to the minus 2 times minus sine x. And then what does that give me in the end? Well, let's just work it out. Um, this negative and this negative go away. So I get sine x in the numerator. And then because this is to the negative 2, this goes downstairs, cosine of x squared. Um, and then we can split things off here, right? So this is sine x 
over cosine x times 1 over cosine x, right? There are two cosines downstairs. Um, this part you should recognize as tangent x. And then this part is what we talked about earlier in this video. This is secant x. So conclusion, uh, the derivative of secant x is, and you'll see it usually written in its uh, secant first, secant x times tangent x. So this kind of like, I'll box it here because it adds another derivative rule, right? We talked about sine, cosine, tangent, and then we can start now taking, uh, finding derivatives of the reciprocal functions like secant x, we just did that over here. You could apply a very similar process to look at the, uh, to derive the rule for the derivative of cosecant x. That's one over sine x and you can use this and this little approach that I advocate here. Um, and then certainly you could find the derivative of cotangent of x, that's one over tangent x. So end up using this at some point. Great, so I will um, zoom out here, just mention uh, another last quick thing in this video. Um, like I was mentioning in video uh, 24.1, which was about derivatives of exponential functions, um, you can see that we are here applying all of the same rules that we've learned thus far in the course, right? This is lesson 24 for us. This is the difference of function, this is a difference of functions, so the derivative is the difference of the derivatives. That was a derivative rule we talked about long ago. Um, here I am applying the chain rule here and also applying the chain rule there. So I could have, if I stayed over here, applied the quotient rule. Um, so again, this is us trying to uh, revisit all of those derivative rules and apply them to new families of functions, which you know helps to um, internalize the rules and then also just get more practice with them. Thanks for watching.